Well, let's discuss the very latest then. I'm joined here on set by International Affairs Editor Philip Turl. Philip, do we know at this stage what exactly has been agreed? Right, what we do know is that there is a transition council we're just hearing about. There. There's going to be two observers in that transition council and seven voting members who will then appoint an interim prime minister. Unsure whether or not um, Ariel Henry will remain in the post until then, but he has now officially resigned, which was, of course, one of the key demands of the uh, armed gangs in Haiti, that he should step down from power and they would stop or wind down their attacks in the country. We'll have to see whether or not that that happens. Uh, there are also other measures that have been um, advanced, put forward by Anthony Blinken, the US Secretary of State. Uh, he said that there'll be $100 million worth of additional money to finance the deployment of a multinational force uh, in Haiti. Uh, the creation of a special college to take what he called concrete steps for the deployment of that force, which will be led by Kenya, uh, with a doubling of support by the US Defence Department. Now, um, you have to remember that Ariel Henry actually did go to Kenya to try to drum up that international force to come in and put an end to the violence in the country. That is why he wasn't allowed back into Haiti afterwards. He's been in Puerto Rico since then, unable to return home, basically, because the airport is under siege and the main ports are blocked. Now, what is going to happen to Ar Ariel Henry remains unclear. The US is saying he can remain in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, which is a uh, territory of the United States for the time being, but it doesn't look as though he's going to return back to uh, Haiti anytime soon even though he said that is one of his objectives. Um, and uh, it's unclear how this peacekeeping force is going to be drawn up and exactly what its role is going to be, bearing in mind the fact that a peacekeeping force that goes into Haiti could very quickly, if the violence isn't quelled, uh, be perceived as being an occupation force. And that's something certainly I don't think that anybody in Haiti wants to see happening. Have we had uh, any reaction at all from the armed groups to this? Well, there have been there has been some reaction so far. There's the uh, leader of one of the biggest armed groups. His name is Jimmy Cherizier. He's best known as Barbecue. That's his uh, street name. Uh, he said that uh, uh, he's not in favour of these international efforts to calm down the situation uh, in Haiti. He says that uh, we Haitians have to decide who is going to be the head of the country and what model of government we want. So that doesn't look too inspiring so far for the moment as to exactly what uh, the armed gangs are going to do. I think the pressure is now shifting from Ariel Henry's shoulders onto the armed gang's shoulders, saying, OK, look, armed gang, we have got rid of the prime minister for you. Uh, that is one of your key demands. You have always deemed him to be someone who is illegitimate, uh, who is corrupt. Now he's out of the picture. It's up to you now to come forward to move forward with us in some kind of negotiating way uh, to pull Haiti out of the uh, extremely bad crisis it's in at the moment. Uh, just to give you some ideas about what's happened since the 29th of February, uh, gunmen have burned police stations, closed the main international airports, raided the country's two biggest prisons, 4,000 inmates uh, have been freed, the main port in port au Prince is closed. That means that ships bringing uh, food into the country, 50% of food is imported into Haiti, they are blocked, they can't get into the country, which has raised even more fears about starvation and hunger in Haiti. 4.7 million people are said to be suffering from acute food shortages in Haiti. So the pressure is absolutely immense on the shoulders of all concerned to find some kind of solution and some kind of way out. But the question still remains, Stuart, and that is the main question here is, how will government representatives, opposition groups, private sector, civil society, religious groups and the armed gangs all get together around the negotiating table and how will they hammer out together and be in agreement about just how Haiti is going to move forward under this new transitional council?